Most experts say kids do better in school when parents get involved in their children's education. So for today, what that really looks like, we're zeroing in on what matters most to help kids succeed in school. Cheryl Ellsworth from the Utah State Board of Education joins me. So Cheryl, I know we talk a lot about this. Parents sometimes seem to equate, gosh, I need to spend more time in the classroom. I need to help with the kids' field trip. I've got to go to the party. Are these things really helping our kids with their education? Yeah, I mean, those are great things, right? We really want parents to be around and show that they show their kids that they are involved. But actually, we're actually as a, as the United States of America, we are making a huge shift from parent involvement to parent engagement, which are actually two different things. Okay, so tell us a little bit about that because you're right. I think I initially I go to okay, I'm gonna be involved in their classroom, that's what I'm gonna do. So what is the difference between the engagement and involvement? Right, so we know involvement as things like moms and muffins, volunteering to be a chaperone for a field trip, um, going to the classroom and supporting as a room mom. These are all great things, or room dad. Um, these are all great things, but um, engagement actually has three components. Um, it builds capacity for the teachers and the parents. It's relational. And the last part that we really need to focus on is that it's linked to learning. Okay, so look for those three things when you're talking about, okay, I'm trying to judge, am I doing something to be involved or engaged? Or engaged, here? right. And so as, as engagement stands, we, we think to ourselves, does it have those three things? Am I, am I linking it to learning or am I just around the school to just be around, to show my kid that I'm here? That I'm present. So how much learning actually happens at home? Yeah, so there, there's this myth, and I'm sure parents feel like, oh, they're at school a lot, but if we it look at- It does feel that way. I mean, you yeah. set them off first thing in the morning, they come home late afternoon, yeah. If you look at a school year, 180 days, um, this is a report from West Ed, and um, actually only 12% of the time are kids actually in school? Oh, you are kidding me. Yeah, 12%. 12% in 180 days, they're only there 12% of their time. Yes, and this, this includes, you know, going home and sleeping and homework, extra curricular activities. Um, putting all of that to the side, only 12% is actually at school. So what, that really is kind of a, a wake up call probably for parents, I know it is for me. What do we need to do then to make sure that learning's happening at, happening at home? You know, so when we're looking at the data, 50% um, of our college students entering freshmen are actually not at grade level reading. Um, they're not reading at grade level and so um, we need to think as families, what can I do to support those foundational skills? And you know, I had a parent once that came to me. I just met this student. He was, I taught third grade for a little bit in Washington, D.C. And um, the, I was concerned about this student and the parent says to me, you know, um, if you were doing your job, I wouldn't need to be here today for this meeting. And I thought to oh, myself, wow. you know, I Let just met this for one second right. before I answer first. And then I, I, I just <laughs> met this student. He was new to my school, and I was trying to help this parent understand that we're actually a team. Um, when you think about any components of a team, there's a lot of trust. Parents, we are as teachers, we're trusting you that if we say like we need your help at home, that you're going to do it. And then parents are trusting us as teachers that if they come to the school and um, they're asking for help, that as teachers, we're actually going to help them. And so, how do you kind of build that trust with them? You know, how do parents mm -hmm. go ahead and say, "I'm not looking at it as." those people over there, the right. teachers, you, you're not doing your job, but kind of a two-way street. So for me personally, and, and I know this from a lot of my colleagues, um, is that we want parents to understand our communication style, right? So I was a teacher that didn't mind texting. There are teachers who prefer emailing. There are teachers who prefer face-to-face -face contact. But I think that hovering and like thinking that teachers aren't doing their job, they actually are. They really want to support kids, but parents also need to trust teachers that we're doing our job. So do you think, I mean, you've been the teacher before, you've had some of those kind of funny parental moments. Do you think that parents have the right expectations for teachers? You know, I actually have met parents in all, all spectrums, right? I have parents that really fully trust um, teachers and you don't, you don't see them around very much. And, um, and so just remembering as a parent that you are your child's first teacher. And um, as I said, your act kids are actually at home way more that, than they are at school. So as a parent trusting yourself, I know what I'm doing, this is my child, 
but also remembering that the teacher is a professional as well. That is kind of nice and gives parents that added responsibility of, listen, I, I'm still holding the reins here. This is not the teacher's responsibility entirely. Of course, I'm involved. Yeah. What do you think about um, student success kind of being a, a process? I mean, it's not... We've all had, I mean, for people with kids, you've got days that are down, days that are up, right. you know, days they do well, days they struggle. Right. What about that process? You know, it, and it is a process, right? There, there are students that kind of just grasp knowledge pretty quickly, and there are some that it takes a little bit more time and just understanding that our kids are all different. And in the classroom as teachers, we, d we differentiate and we say like, this child needs this kind of support. So even as parents realizing that our kids need different kinds of support. So be aware of your kid, be aware yeah. of their circumstances and know that. And, and not you, comparing them to maybe other kids in your family as well. A, other kids yeah. in your family, other kids in the neighborhood, kind of taking that out. Yeah. Okay, Cheryl, thank you so much. Thank that you. That was great. Mm -hmm.